On the evening of February 16th, 2022, a Microsoft senior executive, loving husband and father of four, Jared Breidigan, was shot multiple times, ambush style, in the middle of a secluded street. Now, as he had gotten out of his car to move a tire oddly placed right in his path. Now, Jared had just dropped off his nine-year-old twins to his ex-wife's home in Jacksonville Beach, Florida, and was headed back to St. Augustine, where he lived when the murder occurred. Even more tragic, his two-year-old daughter, Bexley, was in the back seat at the time. Now, his wife, Kirsten, says Jared was having a battle with his ex-wife over custody and financial issues, but never thought something this horrific could ever happen. Now, almost a year later, law enforcement officials arrested convicted felon Henry Tennant, but believe he did not do this crime on his own. So obviously, this leaves the big question, who else could be involved? Well, having been trained as a forensic psychologist and a long working history with law enforcement, this kind of thing absolutely fascinates me because some aspects jump out at me as being almost too obvious. And then at the same time, I've come to have enough experience to know that things aren't always as they appear. So. I really want to dissect the details of this case, and I've asked some people to join me, including trial attorney Heather Hansen, retired law enforcement of 35 years, expert Mark Bachman, and Caitlin Becker, senior reporter for DailyMail.com, who I work with on a lot of different cases. It seems the more intricate they are, the more we seem to intersect. <laughs> and this is certainly one of those things. Mark, let me, let me start with you. You've got so much experience in these matters. What jumps out at you about this case? Just, first of all, where it, Dr. Phil, where it happened at. Uh, the sanctuary is a neighborhood that's very secluded. It's uh, right off the intercoastal waterway in the Jacksonville Beach community. Not high crime. Not a high crime area, not at all. I mean, at best, property crime. And... Uh, uh, Jacksonville Beach doesn't have that many homicides. Now, the city of Jacksonville, it's a little bit different, but sure. uh, this happened uh, over a year ago, a little over a year ago. Uh, initially, there were reports of could have been road rage, could have been a random act of violence. It was immediately dismissed by the police. They started doing their victimology, uh, looking into Jared's life, realized there were some issues along, with, along the way with uh, his ex-wife, and they focused on that. And from there, that led to them focusing solely on any relationship that possibly where they could find the shooter. Um, and it just happened to, uh, eventually, they identified an individual that they felt really good about charging. Right, and so they have charged this individual. And Caitlin, we know some things about this. This isn't a random person. It has nothing to do with anybody involved with this case. What are the relationships? It seems that this individual, he's 61 years old, he has a rap sheet going back to the 90s of pretty minor crimes, all things considered, but he was living in a residence that's owned by Jared's ex-wife, current husband, Mario. So there is a connection between this suspect and the deceased, and that really stood out to me. If the connection is the ex and her current husband, and Jared had a very messy, very long, very contentious divorce with this woman, that absolutely struck me as being something to look into. Yeah, clearly that makes it not random. I mean, he's not a random person to go pick off the street to arrest, but Heather is a really experienced trial attorney. Uh, having someone that you know has a relationship and a connection to it and proving a conspiracy with somebody, there's a huge difference between innuendo and proof, right? That is absolutely right. It is not enough to have innuendo. There's not, en that's not enough to convict. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.